Jeremiah chapter 25 verse 15 where we left off last night and for thus saith the Lord God of Israel now God is going to get into some nations and he wants to make that with all the nations we're going to look at named and unnamed you better have the Lord God of Israel, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because it ain't going to do you no good to have Rome God. As all the most of the nations of the world are under the Roman God of the Catholic Church. That mystery Babylon, the harlot, the Catholic Church, has got all the nations. She has a standpoint all over the world. In every major city and town of America in the 50 states, there's a Roman Catholic Church. In the city I grew up in, New London, Connecticut, there was a minimum of three Catholic churches. And then you've got the rise of the Islam. I don't know how many mosques there are in the city of town, but I guarantee it's growing. I know Islam is a growing fad in the prison system that I was in. Diets are according to the Jewish, good, amen, and to the Islam. But whether all the worldwide religions the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and Jacob, the God of the Bible, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, is not a religion. It's the Almighty God and God of Israel. So what are you going to do with the KKK who don't have anything to do with Israel? What are you going to do with an NACP where it's all about the colored people and not about Israel? And everything will be judged one day on the treatment of the nation of Israel. They are God's people. You pray for them. You help them. You witness to them. You bless them. And God will bless you. And you curse them. And God will curse you. When Abraham's blessed, God said in Genesis chapter 12, I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. When Isaac is blessing Jacob, he passes that same blessing on to Jacob. Now this is an interesting study here. Take the wine cup of this theory at my hand. Now this cup, and there are cups in the Bible, and cups means you fill it with water, you fill it with juice, and there are cups of cups of judgment. And we see that Jesus, on the very last night with his disciples, he took the cup. He said, drink it. It is the blood of the New Testament that is shed. He didn't say what was in the cup. He said, take it and drink it. This is the blood. Not the stuff in it. Read the Last Supper. And he's in the garden and three times he's praying, Father, not thy will, if this cup could pass from me. Men like John R. Rice believe that that cup is death. It's not cup. It's not death. The cup we will see here and the cup that, that the Babylon holds in her hand, the book of Revelation, is a cup of judgment. The cup that Jesus Christ bared is not the cup of death. Death didn't get Jesus knew three days and three nights I'm gonna come I'm gonna rise out of the dead. The cup of Jesus is all the sins of the world. The sinless Jesus Christ without sin on the death, that wrath of the cup of God poured about him, where he became the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world, singular. He became all sin. That's what he said to Father. Father, this sin is wickedness. This sin is violent. It will destroy me. Think about it. The wages of sin is death. 
Jesus Christ without sin. He would have never have died if it was not for that sin becoming upon him. Now, I didn't say Jesus became a sinner. He's sinless. But that sin was placed upon him, causing him to die at that moment. And there's a very, very, very fine line that Jesus became all the sin of the world. Here we're looking at the wine cup of his fury at his hand. We see the very same cup being held in Mystery Babylon. That cup is getting filled. That cup is getting filled. When Adolf Hitler went into power, he had a little wine. And he got into power, he had a little more wine. And when he became the chancellor of Germany, he had a little more wine. And when he started calling upon the Jews, it got filled with more wine. And he started killing the Jews. And he started just mistreating the Jews. It got filled her and got filled her. And he just started going more and more, killing and causing nations to... to to be killed and causing the bombs of, upon Europe and just doing more curses upon Jews and it got filler and it got filler and it got filler and when it started overflowing uh, uh, of the uh, of the cup and that death I don't know how out of Hitler died there's many different things now but when his cup began running over God said okay judgment day death go get him when when the, the, the sun never set upon England, and they started mistreating that Jew with the Belfort Decoration and the land called Jordan and all that. Guys, okay, that's it. Fill that cup up. You're done. And England is still filling that cup up. She ain't done yet. America has a cup. I don't know where that cup is at, but one day America's cup is going to overfill. Russia has a cup, and her cup is going to overfill. And the moment when those cups are overfilled, God said, okay, done. Babylon's cup overfilled, it's gone. Sodom and Gomorrah's cup overfilled, it's gone. Nations have cups. You say, what happened to that nation? What happened to the Assyrian? Their cups overfilled. God said, done. When nations get totally wiped out, the cup has overfilled. Unto all the nations. There's no exclusions. It don't say all the nations except America. You say, well, I don't see America in the Bible. There it is, all the nations. Where do you see America? A-L-L-T-H-E-N-A-T-I-O-N-S. That's America. That's Mexico. That's Canada. That's Russia. That's the Honduras. To whom I send thee to drink. So now we see Jeremiah in verse 1. I mean chapter 1. We see Jeremiah sent to nations. Here he is. Jeremiah is not just a prophet to the nation of Israel. To Judah. He's a prophet to all the world. We saw earlier. Oh earth, earth, earth. Right? Man. Talking about the that God is going to get rid of the human. Man of the kingdom of, of Judah. And it will be a virgin birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 16, they shall drink and be moved and be mad. This cup is going to, you're going to drink it. What you pour out and how much you pour out, you will drink. Oh, no, no, not us. Yes, you will. And be moved. And be mad. Crazy. Your sins and your iniquity of your country, of your people, your leadership, will cause you to be moved and mad. Because the sword that I will send among them. We'll look at that sword in a moment. But remember that sword that God's going to send. We'll look at that in a moment. Then took I the cup at the Lord's hand. So God has a literal cup that Jeremiah goes over and picks up. Jeremiah saw the hand of God. No man can see my face. 
No man has seen God at any time. He's a spirit. Jeremiah saw a hand and he saw a cup as much as those, thir those 12 disciples saw the hand of God with a cup in his hand and said, take it and drink it and miss you. This is the blood of the New Testament. That same hand that Judas, Peter, John saw is the same hand that Jeremiah. You can't see God's a spirit, so you have to be Jesus Christ. And made all the nations to drink it unto whom the Lord had sent me. And they know that thing. All means all. To wit, now watch this, Jerusalem. The cup begins at Jerusalem. What, do you, what did Jesus tell the disciples in Acts chapter 1? Jerusalem, Judea, and the outer parts of the world. The judgment, the cup, begins at the house of God. Jerusalem, that is the house of God. There ain't no Baptist churches. We've been 24, 25 chapters on how the sins of Jerusalem, okay, the iniquity of Jerusalem, you, you got to drink the cup. We're God's people. I don't care. Well, we're Christians. We're children of God. We're under the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah, there would be wood, hay, and stubble. Some Baptist preachers and some Christians think, well, we'll be without judgment and we'll have everything hunky dory and wonderful and great. No, 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 no. We got a cup to drink. It's called the judgment seat of Christ. And that cup involves wood, hay, or stubble, gold, silver, and precious stone. Every Christian, every Christian will have wood and hay and stubble. Judgment begins with God's people. It began with Jerusalem, the cities of Judah. The outskirts of, of Jerusalem. Still God's people. Don't think because you're a child of God, you are of God, that we will not be judged. That's a lie. We will be judged. And the kings thereof. And the princes thereof. To make them desolation. Empty. And astonished. My God, what, what happened there? And a hissing and a curse as it is this day. Nothing changed. Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Oh, we're moving out. You see, if God does not judge the nations we're going to look at in a moment, if God does not judge all the nations, he will have to apologize to Jerusalem. He will have to apologize to Judah. Sorry, Judah. Sorry, Judah. I, I didn't judge Egypt. I didn't judge Mexico. I didn't judge the Aztecs. I didn't judge. Uh, he's going to judge them all. But the judgment begins with his people. And if God doesn't judge the church, the Christians, the heathens of America, the heathens of Africa, the heathens of Europe, the heathens of... Sorry, I, I really apologize. You see, I'm going to judge you guys, but I didn't judge the church. Wrong. God will judge everybody. Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Egypt's the type of the world. And his servants. And his princes and all his people. The mingled people. All the mingled people. All the kings of the land of us. That's where Job was from. That's Edom. And all the kings of the land of Philistines. Ashkelon, Ezra, Ekron, and the remnant of Ashdod. Edom. That's Lot. I mean, no, that's Esau. Brother of Jacob, Moab, that's the child of Lot, kin to Abraham. The children of Amon, that's the other child of Lot, king to kin to Abraham. Oh, we, uh, we know Abraham, that's tough, going to be judged. We know Jesus Christ, tough, you're still going to be judged. We know the Pope, 
tough, you're going to be judged. I, I, uh, you know, I know Muhammad, tough, you're going to be judged. I know Joseph Smith, tough, you're going to be judged. All the kings of Tyrus, all the kings of Zidon, all the kings of the Isle, which are beyond the sea, the Mediterranean Sea, Dedan, Tima, Buzz, and all that are in the uttermost corners, all the kings of Arabia, Saudi Arabia, that's Ishmael. Ishmael is the child of Abraham. You're going to be judged. All the kings of the mingled people that dwell in the desert. All the kings of Zimri. All the kings of Elam. All the kings of the Medes. All the kings of the north. Far and near. One with another. All you know, you know where America comes from? They're right there. What is north of Israel? England. I mean, European, Europe. Where does Americans come from? They come from Europe. Americans didn't come from America. They came from Europe. Far and near. One with another with all the kingdoms of the... There it is. All the kingdoms of the W-O-R-L-D. There's America. There's a Native American. There is Hawaii. There is Peru. There is Brazil. India. Japan. China. There it is. All the kingdoms. Of, well, we're not a kingdom. I don't care what you call yourself. In the Bible, you're a kingdom. Which are upon the face of the earth. Got that? You know what the earth is? It's that globe. It's that round thing. And all the kingdoms that are on that planet earth all, all. There, there's America. You can't find America in the Bible. There it is. And the king of Shishak shall drink after them. Therefore thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, The God of Israel again, Drink ye and be drunken and spew. Vomit. You're going to get so drunk, you're going to vomit. And you're going to fall. Nations are going to fall. America is going to fall. I don't see New Jerusalem. I don't see the new heavens. I don't see the new earth. I don't see with it New America. I see New Jerusalem, the new earth, and the new heavens. I don't see New America. I don't see the old America. You're not going to have the stars and stripes flying from the from the walls of New Jerusalem. I'm sorry. I know it's 4th of July, but I'm sorry. we got to preach the truth here. This nation is wicked. This nation, the Constitution, allows you to have any religion you want. The freedom of religion. Okay. And why is it when we preach Jesus Christ on the street, they're allowed to call the cops on it? They're allowed to give us a hard time. And rise no more. Because of the sword. We'll look at that sword in a moment. Remember that sword. Which I will send among you. And it shall be if they refuse to take the cup. At the hand to drink. There are going to be some nations. Nope. Don't want it. I think that the great white throne judgment, I think a lot of, I think many are going to say, no, I'm not going. The angels are going to have to bound them up and throw them in hostility. Thou shalt say unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Host means all, everything that God created. The trees, the rocks, the planets, the, the stars, all, that's the host. Ye shall certainly drink. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city which is called by my name. Jerusalem. Began at Jerusalem. You know, when Babylon stands up to God. Well, you know, what about your people, God? You know, you called us to go in there and attack your people. And because, you know, they sinned against you. Yeah, that's why I sent you in there to go get them. 
Well, what about Israel, God? They, there was not one king that, that, yeah, I said Assyria. I took care of my people. Now it's time to take care of you. Well, you know, you know, God, the, the pastor ran away with the piano player. That's okay. I took care of that. We call that the judgment seat of Christ. That's all been taken care of. You see, you see my people? You see how some have got crowns and some don't have crowns? Well, yeah, I took care of it. Now it's your turn. You see, if God doesn't judge his people, and he's going to judge those are not his people, those are not his people, are going to say, well, what about yours? We call that a hypocrite, and God is not a hypocrite. Now, when you go, oh, you know that family over there, you know, look at their children, they're unrowdy, and they've got all kinds of problems and all that, and then you look at your family, your family ain't perfect. Jesus said about, I forget which is the case, but the mote and the bean that's in the eye. Hey, you better not be looking at others, because what about what's in your eyeball? First remove what's in your eyeball, then you can look at other eyeballs. Begin at Jerusalem. Begin with you, buddy. For lo, I begin to bring evil on the city that which is called by my name, and ye and it shall ye be utterly unpunished. You know, when they came to John the Baptist, you know, John the Baptist said, Listen, don't give me word the sons of Abraham. You see these stones here? God could raise these stones up to be the sons of Abraham. You know what those stones were? Those stones were the 12 stones that Joshua put in the river and the children of Israel took out of the thing. And he said, 12 tribes, the 12 tribes. Of Israel. Don't give me your Abraham. That rich man is in hell. He said, Father Abraham. Don't give me Abraham. Abraham ain't going to get you out of hell. God through Jesus Christ is only going to get you out of hell. And Israel's running around, we're, we're of God, we're the children of God, we're the children of God, we're of God. And they're fooling around in sin and fooling around in wickedness. And God said, okay, time for the axe to fall. The church today, we're of God, we're of God, we're the children of God, we're of God, we're under the blood of Jesus. And, uh, and we're, but we're rich, we're wonderful, great, how great we are. Okay, axe going to fall. You shall not be unpunished. Now, if God's going to judge Israel and Judah, what about the Christian? For I will call for a sword upon the inhabitants of the earth. Remember that sword. Save the Lord of hosts. Look, look what he just said. He said, my city, called by my name. You're not going to be unpunished. Then he said, call for the inhabitants on the earth. He goes from the inhabitants of his city, Jerusalem, then he goes back to the earth. Hey, I'm going to take care of my own, and I'm going to take care of them. Therefore prophesy, this prophecy, thou against all these words, and say unto them, now this is second advent, the Lord shall roar from on high, and utter his voice from his holy inhabitant, remember this, remember this, remember this, where is the holy habitation of God? Heaven. Remember that. Remember that. Remember the sword and holy habitation. He shall mighty roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout. Now, this is not the church rapture. The rapture is not the second advent, and the second advent is not the rapture. There's a difference. He's going to give a shout. As they that tread the grapes, remember that, remember the sword, remember his holy habitation, remember the grapes of wrath, I think the movie is called, against all the inhabitants of the earth. There's America, there's Panama, there's South Africa, Yemen, Afghanistan, a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. You know what the ends of the earth is? As far as east from the west, and far as the north is from the south. For the Lord has a controversy with the nations, plural. 
That's not Jewish. That's not Jewish. That's not the church either. He will, now remember I told you yesterday, you look, is he speaking to the Jew? Is he speaking to the Gentiles? Is he speaking to the church? Is he speaking to all the world? Here he's speaking to the Gentiles. He will plead with all flesh. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. And 144,000 went out. And I guarantee the words of Jeremiah, the words of Isaiah, were, were also given to the, to the Gentiles. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. Remember that sword, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord host. Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation. Is that not today? And a great whirlwind. In the midst of the book of Job, God spoke to Job out of a whirlwind. There's something about a whirlwind, a tornado, I don't know what it is, but in the tribulation period. Shall raise up from the coast of the earth. Maybe a worldwide tornado. You know, the earthquakes. The slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth. Unto the other end of the earth. Bodies everywhere. They shall not be lamented. Cried for it. Mourned. We got a book of lamentations coming next. Neither gathered. You're not going to gather the dead bodies together. Nor buried. They shall be dung upon the, gr upon the ground. Who? You're not going to bury. They're gonna, the birds are going to. The animals are going to. They're just going to. Pew. Stinky. Rot. How ye shepherds and cry. Wallow yourself in ashes. Just misery. Shame. Ye principal of the flock. You're supposed to take care of the flocks. Shepherds. For the days of your slaughter and your dis dispersions are accomplished. And ye shall fall like a pleasant Vessel. Shepherds haven't been doing The leaders of the nations have not been doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the leaders of Judah have not been doing what they're supposed to do. The leaders of Israel have not been doing what they're supposed to do. The leaders of Jerusalem have not been doing. We read about the shepherds. The pastors of the, of the flocks of the churches, of the Christians, are not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And the shepherds shall have no way to flee. Where are you going to hide from God? Nor the principle of the flock to escape. The voice of the cry of the shepherds and a howling for the principle of the flock shall be heard. For the Lord has spoiled their pastor. And the peaceable habitations are cut down from the fierce anger of the Lord. Remember anger. He has forsaken his covert as the lion, where the hiding place. God's going to come out from hiding. For their land is desolate because of the fierceness of the oppressor. The oppressor. The oppressor. That's the Antichrist. Because of his fierce anger. Now, run over to Revelation 19. Verse 11. Let's read. Revelation 19, 11. I saw what? Holy abode of God, heaven. Open. And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon it was called Faithful, capital F, and True, capital T. And in righteous does he judge and make war. Uh oh. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Somebody's angry. And on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew 
but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. That's not his own blood. For foolish people think it's God's blood. That was spilt out of Calvary. And his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, armies, which were in heaven, followed him upon white horses, that's us, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. How do we get white and clean? At the judgment seat of Christ. That ain't me now. You take me right now. If I were to go to heaven right now, before the judgment seat of Christ, I will be white and clean. I've got unconfessed sin. At the judgment seat of Christ, where the fire cleans. Not dams. We don't we don't go to hell by the fire at the judgment seat of Christ. It cleanses. Out of his mouth goes a sharp uh oh. Uh oh. There's a sword. That with it he should smite the what? Uh oh. Uh oh, that's nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. He treadeth the winepress. Uh oh, uh oh, of the fierceness of the wrath of the Almighty God. And he has on his vesture, on his thigh, a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords, not President. I saw an angel standing in the sun. It's a hot job. And he cried with a loud voice, not because he's standing in the sun. I bet you modern by I got an angel standing in the sun, he's crying. Oh, ooh, ha, ooh, ha, ooh, ha, ooh, ha, ooh, ha. That'd be the modern Bible. Saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of the heaven. Isn't the Bible just weird? Here's an angel in the sun with a loud voice. Hey, 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 birds. <laughs> Come and gather yourself together unto a supper of the great God. <laughs> Better than a bird feeder out in your backyard, I guess. Watch. They may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, of them that sit on them, and all the flesh of men, does that sound like a bunch of dead bodies that not being buried, as being upon the face of the earth as dung? What? They're not getting buried, but God said, hey, birds, I got some food for you. Both free and bond, both small and great. I saw the beast and the kings of the earth, the earth. <laughs> Wouldn't it be remarkably funny if America ends up falling and we get a king in this country? We will have one day the end of presidents. The only presidents I see were in Babylon and they gave Daniel a hard time. Daniel was one of the presidents. And their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, Jesus, and against his army, the Christians. There is quite possibility if America is there, America is going to arm up, suit up, and fight against your Lord, your God, and your Savior, and you. Well, you said, I pledge allegiance to the flag, I give allegiance, I love the earth. America, and great is America. America may stand against your God, your Savior, and you when you come back. They stand against you today. We don't want God, we don't want Jesus, we don't want the Bible in our schools, in our courthouses, in our prisons. You shut up about Jesus Christ. And you close your church doors. I know a pastor, whether right or wrong, I know a pastor in, in, in Los Angeles, Florida, he's fighting the court system for his church to meet. Whether he's right or whether he's wrong, he has a church. And what the great justice system of America, he goes to court, well, 
We're going to move the date up two more weeks. We're going to move a date up 30 days. Well, we can't have it today. We're going to have it in two months. Well, we're going to have it next week. And we're, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 uh. One nation under God, but just don't speak about the God of the Bible. Don't give me the mess. Don't give me the crap. Okay? America, as a nation, does not stand for God in the Bible. You say whatever you want, you believe it's a free country. <laughs> and how many times I've dealt with the police and dealt with the people about preaching on the streets in Daytona Beach, Florida. I'm not against America. I, I love America to the fact that I can be here and I can preach the gospel. That may not. I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken, that's the Antichrist, and the false prophet, the false prophet of all false prophets, that wrought miracles before him. Oh, the false prophet is, uh, He's Pentecostal. Does all kinds of miracles. Which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive in the lake of fire, burning for fire. You know, that's before the people go into the lake of fire in Revelation 20. The false prophet and the Antichrist don't stand before God the judgment seat of Christ. They're already in the lake of fire. Death and hell gives up the, the, the dead. The lake of fire doesn't give up the dead. And the raiment that was slain with the sword of him that sat on the horse, which the sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. All the dead bodies as dung become dung. How did they become dung? Bird poop. Maybe dog poop. Maybe lion poop. Remember a certain woman in the Bible that became dog poop? Jezebel. Isn't she mentioned in Revelation? All many of, <laughs> you say all, I think many. Many of the haters of God in Israel one day may be poop or crap of birds and animals.